Hi guys, in today's challenge I'm going to be doing a few quick drawings for your sketchbook. Um, I've recorded this in real time. I'll put a link in to this um, unedited video above, so if you'd like to go through and draw alongside me with the timer, then click the link in the top right hand side and you can draw along with me. So each drawing I've done, I've done in a set amount of time. Um, I've listed the time and the reference on the left hand side. All my references today have come from the JY Portrait Challenge Instagram page. Um, if you are on Instagram, I'd really suggest um, you follow along the JY Portrait Challenge page. Uh, there's there's um, portraits posted there every day, so it's a really good way to practice drawing portraits and also finding a bit of a community with other people that are drawing along with the daily challenge. So yep, yeah, definitely gets my recommendation. I've pulled some of the historical pictures um, for today's challenge. Um, so today the first drawing is Le Moustache. I drawing this chap um, because I just really liked his outfit and I thought he was a really interesting character and would be fun to draw. So you can see how I've been sketching out his face roughly with the side of my pencil as I always do and then coming in with some detail as I progress with the drawing. I find these drawings are really helpful for me to get into a really good flow state. So when I'm drawing these portraits, I'm so focused on what I'm drawing that I find the world sort of slips away a little bit. Um, setting time is really helpful because it allows you to get used to capturing a likeness in a very short period of time. If the timer stresses you out, then don't bother with it. But I do find having um, a time limit on the, the drawing that I'm drawing really helps helps me kind of make progress and not noodle too much on things and also means that I don't get too attached to drawings. If something's only taken me 11 minutes to draw then I won't get too worried if it doesn't look great and I can just move on to a new drawing. So I really love drawing feathers and hair. I find when you draw those it's it's all about getting a feel for the the way that the different hairs flow i guess is the best way to describe it so following the flow of the hair and just figuring out how you can make pencil marks that really suggest what it is you're drawing without drawing every single little thing and getting the hang and practice of doing that um, really does is an important part of drawing knowing what to draw and what you can leave out So the next drawing is Dylan, this is Dylan Sara. He is an artist, um, I do recommend actually giving him a follow, he does really great live sessions um, and he's got videos on YouTube, he's got uh, lots of tutorials, he does videos for Sketchy which is why how I found out about him. Um, he does great stuff around creating his own natural pigment and he does great works of art involving inks and pencils so yeah definitely check him out, he's a really cool artist. Um, I love it when an artist does a reference picture because they're always so fun. I can tell here he probably got a box from Amazon and just took the paper out and wrapped it around his neck. Um, so yeah, it makes a fun picture to draw um, with the different textures of, of the paper going around his neck. So this was a fun one and nice and quick because you obviously you can't see all his face. It's more about the shapes that you're seeing in the drawing. <clears throat> so really thinking about the overall shapes that I see rather than thinking of it as a face I think is very helpful. So you're drawing like a triangle for the nose and a circle for the head. If you sort of break it down to shapes, it really does help you capture an accurate likeness sometimes when it becomes less a person and more a series of shapes. So now I'm drawing Eris. Um, he's got a really interesting shaped face. So I really started off with exaggerating that, which is why he starts off by looking a bit like an alien. Um, yeah, so it's, <laughs> I do, you'll see as I, I finish the drawing, I do kind of bring in some more accuracy. So we like, I fix the, the width of his face. But I think sometimes I find when someone's got something unique and original about their face, exaggerating it to an extreme degree sometimes helps me capture a more accurate likeness. So 
So I spent quite a lot of time looking at the little shapes I see. Um, it's quite hard to explain what I mean by little shapes, but where there's areas of contrast um, or areas of colour, just kind of really observing the shape that that colour makes, how you would capture it with a brush stroke or how you would use the select tool if you were on a digital application to select a shape that you can use to fill with that colour. That's kind of almost the way my brain's working when I'm doing these drawings. So this is my last drawing wall. I thought this one was quite fun because it was a really unusual angle. So I like to kind of step it up for my last drawing of my challenge. Um, so yeah, this was a really fun angle. So quite challenging, but again, if you're breaking it down, you're seeing it as a series of shapes, then something that does seem quite intimidating and complex can become quite really quite doable. I've seen some people practice using things like boxes or objects as a way of trying to get used to accuracy in drawing shapes. Um, I found that I work best when I actually practice faces as a way of drawing shapes, if that makes sense. As long as you have something that you can use to check in on the likeness and yeah, you can always use the application, um, the overlay application that I sometimes use or something similar to check likeness if that's something you need to work on. You'll see I jump around a lot so I don't just work on one particular area I'm constantly my eyes constantly bouncing around I'll even look back at my other drawings sometimes you see that's why I jumped over and fixed the other drawing is I'm, I'm not kind of just completely focus on that one tiny area I'm constantly looking at the whole drawing and reassessing it um, and seeing what I can I can do to fix it and make it better so you can see I'm really sort of feeling my way around the face and and trying to get those angles and the shapes that I'm seeing accurately I think sometimes with these unusual angles you don't really see whether you've been successful until right towards the end when everything comes together and that makes it quite fun. I mean, as long as you don't get attached to these sketches and you don't have any expectations for them, then I think it can be quite a fun exercise to, to practice. So those are all the drawings finished. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you um, do have a go at the drawings, feel free to, and you post them on Instagram, do tag me, I'd like to see your work. Um, and if you are on Instagram, do go ahead and um, follow Judith's page. I'm just showing you a, a screen of it, shot of it on the left here. So you can see there's loads of really great reference pictures here from really diverse faces and really diverse poses. So. Yeah, it's a really great resource and I recommend it um, as a way to get some practice drawings. I think if you drew 100 of these in 10 days, like the 100 day challenge, I think you would definitely improve your um, work a lot better. I hope you enjoyed this video today and I'll see you all soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.